So the PC client for EtherGazer has finally hit global and with it. A new limit break system allowing you to raise the level cap of modifiers from 80 to 100 and a new skill upgrade system to further boost your modifier's combat potential. An important thing to note is that these systems are endgame features, so if you're early in the game, this information may not be immediately useful. However, it will become relevant as you progress, so bookmarking this video could be beneficial for when you do reach the endgame. Let's begin with the easiest system to cover first, that being the Limit Break system. Selecting any level 80 modifier will now give you a new Limit Break option. In order to limit break your characters, you will need the following material. Origin Radiance, a material that can be farmed in the Lost Vestiges using stamina, crafted with Origin Condensation, purchased from the Daily Shop, which I wouldn't recommend, and obtained in limited quantities from the Imprint Shop. Origin Radiance is relatively easy to gather, especially since you can farm it using stamina. The next thing you need is Origin Firmament. This material is going to be the bottleneck for this system and is currently obtainable only from a single activity. Iterative testing, which is also the most challenging content in the game. If you're free to play, aim to clear floors three to five. If you're not, it shouldn't be too much of an issue as long as you have modifiers with the appropriate elements to handle the bosses. Once you have the required materials, you will now be able to limit break your selected character to the new level cap, boosting the base attack, defense, max HP and crit rate. Now that we understand how the limit break system works and where to obtain the materials, the next question is, who should you invest in? In my opinion, if a character contributes less than 20% of your team's total damage directly, it probably isn't worth leveling them up to 100, at least not for now. Once these resources become more common and you're looking to min-max your teams, you might consider investing in them but for the time being, it's just not the best idea to do so. This means pure support characters like Hera, Ling Guang, Heimdall, Okuni, and so on, should remain at level 80 for the time being while your main DPSs get the level cap increase. Of course, in dual DPS teams like Osiris and Thor, Ying Zhao and Lu Wu, or Tsukuyomi and Buzenbo leveling both mods to level 100 is worth. Moving on to the new skill upgrade system. In order to actually upgrade the skills, you will need the corresponding elemental expansion chip which are obtainable as drops and can be bought from the iterative test game mode and shop respectively. As for how to go about upgrading a character's skills, you can approach it in one of two ways. Option one is the all-in strategy where you focus all of your resources into a single character to make them as strong as possible right away. However, this means putting all your eggs in one basket, which may hinder your ability to efficiently tackle endgame content with multiple teams. Option two is to prioritize upgrading whichever skill is responsible for the most damage output for each modifier. For example, with a modifier like Tsukuyomi, you'd max out skill three since it's her primary source of damage. Given that resources will be limited, this approach is generally the best option for most players. Ultimately, I'll leave it up to you which way to approach it. For now, here are my recommendations for each limited banner S rank modifier. Keep in mind, this is a subjective priority list, so depending on your playstyle, it may not align perfectly with your own. So feel free to ask questions and I'll try my best to answer. Just for the record, boosting a support character's support skill does not affect the buff that skill provides. Unlike evolution particle on warps, these upgrades only affect a skill's damage output.
約束したから。